You won't believe this, but watch till the end. You will not be disappointed. So while researching Ethiopian history for my book, The Red Bank of Roha, I kept asking myself why it all sounded so familiar. And then it suddenly hit me. I had seen part of it before in Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Let me be clear. Most of the Lord of the Rings trilogy is based on Norse and English history. However, it is likely that Tolkien was also heavily inspired by African history, particularly Ethiopian history. Let's not forget, Tolkien was born in Africa. And when he started writing his book in 1935, Ethiopia was making headline news worldwide after Italy invaded it in 1935. I will start with the most obvious links between Ethiopian history and Lord of the Rings. And these are the names of the cities and regions in both of them. In Lord of the Rings, we have Gogoroth. In Ethiopia, we have the city of Gogora. In Lord of the Rings, Harad. In Ethiopia, Hara. Lord of the Rings, Barajil. In Ethiopia, Bahida. Lord of the Rings, Rohan. In Ethiopia, Roha. By the way, Roha in Ethiopia is now known as Lalibela, and it has also always been known for its rich horse riding culture. Even today, much like the riders of Rohan in Lord of the Rings. Then we also have Gondor in Lord of the Rings. And in Ethiopia, we have Gonda. Here's where it gets even more interesting. Roha was the capital of Ethiopia for several centuries, even after its name was changed to Lalibela in the 13th century. Eventually, the capital was moved to Gonda, which, just like Gondor, is known for its medieval-type castles. The capital of Gondor in Lord of the Rings is Minas Tirith. The name of the Ethiopian king who first suggested Ethiopia's new capital be established in the Gonda region, King Minas. The most famous mountain range in the Middle Earth of Lord of the Rings is the Misty Mountains. The most famous mountain range in Ethiopia is Eta Ali. And guess what Eta Ali means in the local language? Smoking Mountains. Kind of like Misty Mountains. But it does not end there. Eta Ale holds the longest existing lava lake in the world since the early 20th century. This kind of reminds me of Mount Doom in Lord of the Rings, which contained the lava lake where Frodo Baggins destroyed the Ring of Power. And in Tolkien's Sindarin language, Mount Doom is called Orudruin, which means fiery mountain, much like Ethiopia's Smoking Mountain, which the locals also refer to as the Gateway to Hell. Also, the number 9 is significant to both Ethiopia and Lord of the Rings. In Lord of the Rings, Sauron gave 9 rings to the 9 riders to serve him and spread his influence throughout the realm while he watched from the Tower of Isengard. Ethiopia's medieval history was heavily influenced by its version of Christianity. Guess what? In Ethiopia, there is a very significant group of clergy often referred to as the 9 who were tasked to spread Christianity throughout the realm in the 5th century by the king while he observed and monitored their work from the then capital, Axum, known for being dotted with towers and obelisks and for having the largest known obelisk ever built. Just like the nine in Lord of the Rings achieved some form of immortality as wraiths, so too did the nine in Ethiopia achieve immortality as saints and they are very highly revered in Ethiopian Christianity today. Few examples in history have brother kings who rule together, except in Gondor in Lord of the Rings and in Ethiopia, and the similarities between the two are striking. The brother kings of Gondor in Lord of the Rings were Isildur and Anarion. The brother kings in Ethiopia were Azana and Seizana, who ruled in the 4th century. Azana's Christian name was Abreha, which means he who illuminates. Isildur built a city called Minas Ithil, which means the Tower of the Rising Moon. One illuminates, one is the moon. It doesn't end there. Seizana's Christian name was Asbeha, which means he who brings dawn. Anarion built a city called Minas Anno, which means the Tower of the Sun. One brings dawn, daytime, the other brings the sun, daytime. And it still does not end there. The deaths of both older brothers were shrouded in mystery. Isildur's death by Ox was known only to a few. Likewise, all that is known of Azana's death is that he was killed in a battle somewhere in western Ethiopia. And there is more. In Gondor, after Isildur and his line of kings died out, the rule of Gondor was passed on to stewards who ruled Gondor and were never accepted as kings. This is somewhat similar to what happened in Ethiopia. According to legend, around 1000 BC, King Menelik I 
who claimed to be the son of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba, inaugurated the Solomonic dynasty in Ethiopia. However, about 2,000 years later, in the 10th century, his dynasty was overthrown by the Zagwe clan. Just like the people of Gondor regarded the many rulers of Gondor who came after Isidore's line as mere stewards to the throne, so too were the Zagwe rulers who came after Menelik's line regarded as mere stewards to the Ethiopian throne. And centuries later, just like the bearded and wise Gandalf mentored and guided Aragorn from exile to reclaim the throne and restore Isildur's line of kings to the throne of Gondor, so too did the bearded and wise Saint Tekla Hermenot of Ethiopia guide Yekuno Amlak from exile to reclaim the throne of Ethiopia in 1270 and restore the Solomonic dynasty and Menelik's line of kings, which eventually moved the capital of Ethiopia to Gonda. This Solomonic line of kings continue to rule Ethiopia for the next 700 years until their overthrow in 1974. If you can, please be sure to pick up a copy of my novel, The Red Monk of Roha, to get more of an insight into medieval Ethiopian history. It's available in ebook, paperback, and audiobook formats.